Hi, today on Sweet Honey Cove, we are going to take a look at WPShop.io and how you can use it on your WordPress.org website. So let's get started. WP Shop is a plugin that allows you to integrate a Shopify store to your WordPress website, specifically WordPress.org. On their website, if you go to try for free, you can enter in your email address and they will email you a, a zip file to upload to your website. Over here, I have my test website to show you how this works. Once you have the zip file, you can go to your WordPress dashboard and add new. Click add new for plugins and then click upload plugins. This is where you would upload the zip file. Follow the next steps and soon you'll see WP Shopify here on the left side. Now depending on how many plugins are installed on your WordPress website, it might be further down in this menu. Once we're ready, we click on WP Shopify and we see the connect menu item is highlighted for us. Here is where things are going to get a little more challenging. What we need to do here is essentially get special credentials to our Shopify website. Now there's a few things you can do, and we're going to take a look at a, a Shopify website to talk about that. Here is an example Shopify store that I'm going to use throughout this video. To get the credentials needed to help you connect this, we have to go to the apps menu item over here and click on it. Once we do, we can scroll on down to where this little link says manage private apps and click on that. From here, Shopify will give you a warning on the dangers of potentially using private apps. That is what WP Shopify is. It's a special private app that's going to have a certain level of access to your Shopify store. From this example, we're going to continue, but it's always good to examine if you really need this solution. The best way to use this is if you do not have a Shopify storefront, as your, your WordPress website will act like that storefront. Once everything loads, I can name this app. So I'm just going to come up with a name. And I can enter in an email address. Perfect. Now I'm going to choose what's called API permissions. API permissions essentially tell what is allowed to what things are allowed to this plugin on my WordPress website. Now, not everything is going to be needed for it to fully work. But just in case, be prepared to revisit this in the future to add more permissions. So I'm going to go through and just set the usual, which is adding read and write for customers. And I'm just going to go through this real quick. If at any time you're wondering what you need to exactly connect here, if you go back here, there is also a tutorial that can guide you through the process as well. So once I think I have everything in place, I'm going to scroll on down to one more section called Storefront API. Storefront API is, again, another way for this plugin to talk to the storefront of the Shopify store. So I'm going to click this checkbox, and I'm just going to make sure everything here is checked so that nothing gets lost in the data transfer between Shopify and WordPress. I'm going to click Save. It's going to give me one more warning here. So just in case you're curious about security, which you should be, this will create special API key. So only this app and the plugin will know this key, which does limit the potential of something trying to cause mischief on your store. It's not impossible that it could be used for other purposes, but it does eliminate the chances of it. So as I go through, I see there's an admin API. Now, some of this is already grayed out because I don't want this all over the internet. But as I can tell, each of these fields will line up to these fields over here on this app. Now, the one thing that can get you is the Shopify domain. A lot of times in web browsers, you will highlight and copy this part of the domain. You do not want to include this HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash only this first part that is 
this first part that is before the dot my shopify.com only this thing so if i copy this as an example and paste it here then you can get an idea of how that looks perfect so i'm just going to take a moment and copy everything else over so i already copied everything over but it's good to review one more time again we can see that the the settings that I've chosen for this example, now there is always a possibility I have to come back and change this again, but it's good to note that we can. So I check over everything and everything looks great. So once everything looks correct, I'm gonna go back to my WordPress website here and click connect your Shopify store. Depending on how many products are available on your Shopify store, this can take a few moments. As I can see, there is one error so that it wants to be able to read product listings and so I'm going to go back over here and just make sure I enabled that. So I probably didn't. So I'm going to try that one more time. Read product listings right here, product listings, read and write. So I did forget one item. So I'm going to be editing that. All right, so I'm retrying the sync now that I've changed those settings and hopefully I've clicked all the read, write and settings. This gets me every single time because there are so many things that you do need to enable for it to fully work. And here it says everything is successful. So I'm going to close the sync now. Now I can look over these settings just to make sure everything else looks OK. Generally, it's going to create some default pages to, as landing pages for the different things within Shopify to show up on your WordPress. The one important thing is product detail pages. By default, this is untabbed or not enabled. And what will happen is anytime someone pick, clicks on a product, it is technically calling back to Shopify. And depending on what way you're integrating this, you, you'll want to make sure you've enabled product detail pages, which will make that product show up on its own specific type of viewing page on WordPress. So everything else I'm just gonna go through this looks pretty good. I can even go through and change, you know, how big feature images are. This is, it will actually pull these from WordPress as well. There are going to be some features that are only available in the pro version. So keep in mind that this is not the complete full customization because I am using the free one. Cool. And again, in anything else you think you may want to use, you can try it out and then you can always disable it in case you didn't. So I'm going to save. Perfect. So how does this look now? Well, I could try a few things. I'm going to hover over my little house with my website name and click visit site. And I can see here the plugin did create two pages. Now, technically, you could create these pages on your own and it will just be populated by the plugin. So that's always an option. So I'm going to click collections now. In this case, I really don't have collections on my on this test store. So I'm going to go over to products. Now I can see it's already working because I can, as you notice, there's this little floating shopping cart over here, which is actually technically Shopify hanging out here on your WordPress website. And here I see a product. Now this may not completely work because this is a development store that we're just messing around with. So I'm gonna click view product to see if it works. Oh, in this case, it did work. Awesome, so I can see this is fully working. Here's the thumbnail, any quantity price. Now there's a little bit of a gotcha here. You want to make sure that you're updating the prices on Shopify and then syncing it over as sometimes it may not communicate correctly. But as I look through here, I can definitely see the variations. I could add to cart and I can go completely checked out. Now, again, because this is a development store, this checkout process will not be complete. But the final checkout process is 100 percent Shopify. And so this is awesome. This is really cool. This gives me a safe, secure way to have a store on a WordPress website. So I do highly recommend that you check out the WPShop.io, which is the WordPress Shopify plugin, and see if it works for what you're looking for in connecting the two, the WordPress with the, with the Shopify. And if you have any questions, you can always leave a comment down below. And be sure to, I left the link as well to Shopify in case you want to look at more features there and um, have fun. And I'll see you in the next video.